Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to give you the very best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to talk about ships, about how to fit a ship, how to work out what kind of fittings you should put on a particular ship, and working out what kind of ships you actually want to go towards. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of an all-round video, this one, but I thought you'd enjoy it. Basically, I've had a lot of people saying, like, you know, I'm really enjoying my Algos, how do I fit an Algos? And rather than just me saying, here's a video that shows how to fit an Algos, I thought it'd be a better idea to teach you how to figure that out on your own depending on what it is you want to achieve then other people will say okay i fit my algos and this is what i'm using where do i go from here what other ships should i look at that kind of thing now i am going to do specialist videos on each of these i've touched on this with minmatar and with amar and i've had a touch on this but i want to do actual dedicated videos to showcase individual like sort of possibilities of where you can go so what i'm going to cover today is how to look at an individual ship um, work out what you should be fitting on it and so you can plan to either build it or make sure you know what you're doing um, as you aim towards that ship. Now of course if you do enjoy this video let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes and ding that notification bell to know when the next video goes live. Along the bottom of your screen now are a whole bunch of social media channels. Those are great ways to come and find me and ask questions about Eve Echoes or just chat Eve Echoes in general you know in, in fairness I love talking about all this. Cat Skull Cartel Discord especially is a very active place to be. If you want to come and join the Cat Skull Cartel um, as a corporation in game you can do so by joining that Discord at the bottom of the screen now. Make an application on the Discord discord um, and we are accepting new people we are growing and making an empire in space now talking about empires as well everything i do on this channel is done entirely from my phone that is the recording like now i'm sitting here with a phone in my hands and a headset in my ear that's all done entirely on my phone the editing's done on phone uploading is done on phone everything is done here if you want to support me to keep doing this well, you can come find me on Patreon. Every pledge, every dollar really helps, helping me upgrade my equipment, helping me hopefully get some stable internet so I can do this even better than I currently am. That said and done, let's continue and talk about fitting. Of course, we're going to be looking at my favorite ship, the Thrasher, this absolute beauty here. Three Guild Belt Shark with the super cool Earth skin on it. Loving the new skins. Anyway, if you're looking to find out about ships, obviously the best place to go is the ship tree. Now, here I'm at the Minmatar one. If I tap down here in the bottom left, it'll take me back to the main page. But we are going to look at Minmatar, so that's the one we're going to go in on. Now, when you look at a ship tree, if I zoom right out on this, up the left-hand side, you can see are the tech levels. Tech 1 through 5 shown there lit up. Tech 6 is greyed out because I'm not yet tech 6, so I can't fly any of those even if I did manage to buy one. I can only fly up to tech 5. Now, from left to right as well, the branches of these trees are the frigates on the far left, destroyers, cruisers in the middle, battle cruisers, and then battleships on the far right. I've had a few people ask what the differences between all those are. Basically, frigates are small, fast, don't really do much individually. They tend to be lower damage um, and very fragile, but they are fast and they can be very hard to hit. Battleships are then the opposite end of that scale. Very big, very powerful, but very easy to hit because they are so slow moving and big. Cruisers kind of operate a middle ground on that in that they're not particularly hard to hit, but they're a little bit faster than battle cru uh, battleships, etc. They're the mediums. It's small, medium, and large. Destroyers then kind of fit a middle, um, a middle role, as do battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are bigger than cruisers, but not as big as battleships. Um, and there's kind of a rocks, paper, scissors goes on there in that, yes, a battleship is likely to be able, uh, is likely to be able to take out a cruiser very, very easily, and a cruiser is very likely to be able to take out a frigate. But then a frigate can get up close and personal to a battleship and whittle it down because the battleship's guns aren't going to be able to hit such a small target. It's not quite as simple as that, but that's the basics. Anyway, so you have got yourself a new ship, or you're thinking about getting a new ship, you want to have a look at what this all means. So we're going to tap on the Thrasher here, and you'll see it comes up with the page here. Thrasher, Destroyer, and that little triangle, the line under it, is the system image for a Destroyer. You will notice when you are fighting pirates and things like that, those are the, si the, the symbols that you'll see. Tech level 3 means, of course, I need to be at tech level 3 to be able to fly this, and it can be insured for repairs. If you lose a ship and it is tech level 3 or lower, or a trainer or a prototype, you can go to the kill mail in-game and revive that ship. It will lose all fittings and anything that it had on it, but you can have the ship rebuilt uh, for a very small cost. Below where it says destroyer, you have the three icons here, the, the, th the little three dot, and um, with three is high slots, that's turrets, weapons, that kind of thing. 
The two and the two little lines are mid slots, so this ship has two mid slots, um, which are kind of sub weapons, things like neutralizers, E War modules, uh, warp disruptors, weather fires, that kind of thing. And then the little dot with the three next to it means three low settings. Low set, uh, low fittings are kind of things like tracking computers, um, afterburners, and propulsion systems, um, that kind of thing. They're, they're your ship's support systems, basically. So this has three high slots, two mid slots, and three low slots. Now it also gets a roll bonus of plus 25% small cannon optimal range. That immediately suggests what kind of weapon you want to fit on this. You don't have to do anything special, it just means if you put a cannon on here that has a 10 kilometer optimal range, it's now got a 12.5 kilometer optimal range. That's just what the Thrasher does. It makes small cannons better range, which means it can be really good with strike cannons for, uh, for kiting. It can also be just good for auto cannons because you don't have to get quite as close and personal. Then you have the dedicated skills. Now these are bonuses that the ship will grant based on skills you have trained. Small cannon operation, for example, will give you 7.5% small cannon damage for each level that you have in small cannon operation. Meaning if you have two levels in small cannon operation, you will get 15% uh, additional small cannon damage. And that's on top of obviously the optimal range. So you can see how this can actually get quite powerful quite quickly. I think it's 32.5 if I remember. No, 37.5 sorry if you've got full five levels in small cannon operation destroyer command then if you get destroyer command up for each level you have in destroyer command you get plus five percent flight velocity flight velocity is down here 273 meters per second is the standard speed if you have destroyer command at five then you're going to get an additional 25 percent of that so that your thrasher is just going to fly that little bit faster now, as we look at the basic info here as well, you can see that it has an overall defense of 2847. That is the combined total of your shield, your armor, and your hull. Below all of this, you have a warp speed of 4.5 AU. That's how fast it moves at warp. Power grid output of 41 megawatts. That's how many modules you can fit to it. We'll come to that in a moment. Capacitors of 431 gigajoules. That means if you're activating things like shield boosters and all those kind of things that chew up your capacitor, um, this is how much of it, how much the capacitor you actually have available um, as basic on the ship. And of course, that can be upped with skills like destroyer engineering. Finally then, cargo hold capacity of 800 meters cubed means this can carry 800 meters cubed worth of loot in it before you need to start dumping some stuff off. It does then look at shield resistance as well. This basically means that any explosive damage there on the far right will be reduced by 50%. If you get hit for 100 explosive damage, it'll only actually take 50. Same with uh, uh, kinetic there at 40. If you were hit with 100 uh, kinetic damage, you're only going to take 60 of it. 20% uh, resistance for thermal and no resistance at all for electromagnetic. If you're hit with a laser for 100 damage, it will do 100 damage to the shields. And that's only the shields. It, uh, it does change in a moment, as we'll see here. Now, you can tap on details, and this will take you to the ship itself. Now, straight up as well, this is a great way that you can actually try out the different skins. There are some cool-looking skins, I think. I do really like the Earth one. I'm a big fan of red and gold and silver, um, so red and gold being present on there is really cool as well, although I do also really like the Exoplanets Hunter. It's very similar to the just the standard Thrasher, but it looks cool anyway. Um, again, we can look at the trait description here. That gives you a basic idea of what's going on. Um, you can see what that all means there. It's basically the page we've just looked at, but all combined together. If we go to attributes and fittings, this gives a more detailed breakdown on everything we've seen so far. So you can see the 323 at the top there again. Their defense, as I said, of 2847. You can now actually see how that's broken down. 898 shield. 799 armor, 708 structure, and you can see the resistances there as well. This means if someone is shooting at you with electromagnetic, then they're going to carve through your shield very quickly. If they were shooting at you with a weapon that does 100 electromagnetic, it's only going to take 9 hits for them to chew through your shield. That electromagnetic weapon, however, once it hits the armor, gets its reduction of 60%, meaning that laser now only does 40 damage per hit, so it's going to take a lot longer to carve through that armor. This is why, as I said, lasers are better at carving through shields, explosive weapons are better at carving through armor structure usually is unified between you can also see next to shields the 760 there that is the time it takes for your shield to recharge from 0 to 100 unassisted if you are out of combat if you're not doing anything nothing's active your shield will go from 0 to 898 over 760 seconds it's a fairly long time but it does come back on its own which armor does not Ultimately, when you are looking at this, whether or not you shield tank it, whether you put shield repair modules like, you know, shield boosters or shield extenders, or if you're going to put armor repairers on it, in this particular case, this is a shield tank. There is more shield here to work with. Think of it this way. You've... <laughs> 
You have a health bar for shield, a health bar for armor, and a health bar for structure. Whether you tank based on shield, armor, or structure ultimately is based on which of those is the bigger a bigger health bar. It's easier to repair a big health bar than it is a small health bar. You've got more time to work with it. Um, here, if I were trying to armor tank, I've only got 800 armor to work with, 799 armor to work with. It's much harder to tank. So this would be a shield ship. Whether you go for extender or booster is up to you though. Capacitors, you can see here, capacitor recharge time, 185 seconds from zero to full. Max capacitor recharge rate is 5.82 gigajoules per second. This is because a capacitor um, recharges at a steady rate from about 27% up. If you are below 27%, your capacitor takes longer to recharge per percent. That's why it is max capacitor recharge rate. So from about 30% upwards, it will recharge at 5.82 gigajoules per second. Below that 30%, it is much slower to recharge. Do not let your capacitor go down below 30 unless you absolutely have to. Max locked targets. This particular ship can lock onto a maximum of 5 targets. Of course, that does rely on you having targeting skills as well. If your targeting skills only allow you to lock onto three, then you can only lock onto three. But equally, if you've got targeting skills that allow you to lock onto six and you're flying a thrasher, you will still only lock onto five. Signature radius. If you've watched my video on missiles, you'll understand what the signature radius of a ship means. It's essentially how big the space that the ship actually is in space. It's like a sphere um, that other things target and lock onto based on it. That is the vital statistic of how easy you are to hit, how easy you are to lock onto, and how well missiles will apply damage, etc. 52.9 meters is the signature radius of a thrasher. Scan resolution, 565 kilometers, and a sensor strength of 10.6. Those are basically how quickly you can lock onto other ships and at what kind of range. The further a ship is away and the smaller that ship is, the harder it is to lock onto. This will actually do surprisingly well. It's got a long range for the resolution and the sensor strength is particularly high, so it will lock quite quickly. If you compare that to something like a battleship, they'll lock a lot slower. Finally, then at the bottom here, we have the flight velocity, 273 meters per second. That is how fast the Thrasher moves without any additional propulsion systems active. That is to say, no afterburner and no micro warp drive. That's how fast you'll move. If you're warping between particular points, you will move at 4.5 AUs per second. Um, that is a, a fairly standard speed. The average frigate is 5 um, to 5.5. The average destroyer is about 4 to 5. So that's fairly middling. It's not as fast as some destroyers, but it's, it's on the upper end of destroyers. Mass of 160, sorry, 1.16 million, I think that is. Sorry, I can't count the zeros, can't count the zeros. 1.6 million, 1.6 million kilograms mass. And then the inertia modifier is 1.9 times. That is ultimately your turning circle, how quickly it takes you to align, that kind of thing there. Obviously, the uh, the better the inertia modifier, the faster that you align and drift. So, having had a look at the Thrasher, let's just give a quick comparison from the Thrasher to something like a whopping Tempest. So, if we open up the Tempest um, and just have a quick compar uh, comparison, comparison to here, there's the really cool appearance of what a Tempest looks like. It's trait description, large cannon operation bonus per level, plus 5% large cannon damage. Battleship command gives you a reduction to large cannon activation time. So what skills should be looking for if you aim to go into a Tempest? Those two. Basically, those two. Plus anything generic for battleships. Battleship command, battleship... Uh, Battleship defense, battleship engineering, that kind of thing will always help out there. Attributes and fittings, it's got two drone tubes, eight high slots, four mid slots, six low slots, and three of each of the rigs. And rigs are something, again, we'll cover in future um, in more detail. Very large, well, decent cargo hold capacity, decent for a destroyer, um, not huge for a battleship, they can get bigger. Defense, though, is huge, 64,739. You can clearly see that that is based on a very large shield of 20,412, more than it is on armor or structure. So, to say it with me, this is a shield tank. Capacitors are very large, max lock target 7. Flight velocity, however, warp speed is 2.0. Um, its flight velocity is only 147 meters per second, and its inertia modifier is a pitiful 0.116 times. That is very slow. That is gonna, you're gonna watch a clock turn faster than you are your ship. Scan resolution as well, you can see um, it's a lot smaller on the scan resolution and the signature strength, uh, signature strength is a bit higher, but the scan resolution is lower, meaning it does take longer to lock on. Okay, so you've got an idea of what ship you want to go for. You now know what skills to look for for training it. What if, so you've sat there and you've looked at the Thrasher and gone, right, okay, I need to have small cannon, 
uh, operation and destroy a command. You get those skills, you finally end up in your ship, how do you actually fit it? Well, you go into the fitting menu, of course, and you can see here that I've actually already fit mine. With my skills and the current fittings I've got, I've got 114.32 DPS, that's damage per second, um, with a defense of 2848, and of course, as before, that is heavily reliant on shields. My capacitor, however, is not stable. This means if I have everything turned on, my capacitor will drain in 1 minute 20 seconds. Just means I need to make sure I don't have my capacitor on at all times. I could go into destroyer engineering and make that a little bit more stable by leveling that up, but I don't want to skill into destroyers, so don't make me. Um, <laughs> 1.2 uh, minutes is absolutely fine. 1 minute 20 is absolutely fine for this. Anyway, so let's actually have a look at how I've fit this. So of course, with high slots, there are various different things I could fit. I've put in Mark V small autocannons, but what about beam lasers? Why wouldn't I put beam lasers in here? Well, obviously, because the ship gets bonuses to small cannons, not to small lasers. What about medium beam lasers or medium can cannons? Again, I only get the bonuses to small cannons, so that's what I should be aiming to fit. Same with missiles, any of those kind of things there. I don't want to worry about those. I want to focus on my cannons. Now, I could put strike cannons in there because those do get the bonuses from the Thrasher and they also get that bonus for optimal range. So rather than having an auto cannon here, which as you can see has an optimal range of 1.58 kilometers and an accuracy fall off of 5.78, well, that optimal range being 25% increase, it, it takes a one kilometer to a 1.25 kilometer. It's not a huge thing. On the other hand, if you've got a 10 kilometer optimal range, it becomes a 12.5 kilometer optimal range. So strike cannons do actually work really, really well on thrashes. I just like to go for the brawler build. I want to get up close and personal because this is predominantly going to be a PvP ship. Great for me getting up next to someone and blowing them up, either in small fleets um, or it, it, like if I get a warp disruptor, I will have that equipped through there as well. Now, for the mid-slots, there are a couple of different options I could go for here. First of all, I have a Mark V Stasis Webifier. This, as you can see here, when it is applied to someone, and it only has a range here of 11.2 kilometers, it gives a velocity adjustment of 51%. It slows them the hell down. It means if they're trying to run away from me, like manually, not warping, they're not going to be able to get very far. If they're trying to orbit me at a high speed, I can slow them right down. This is the kind of thing you want to keep an eye on these. If you're going into cruisers, have a Stasis Webifier effect. It, uh, fitted. The second slot, I'm actually also going to put in a small energy Nosferatu. The reason for me doing that is that these drain energy out of the target's capacitor and into mine, and an optimal range of four kilometers, accuracy fall off of two, means that actually I am going to be in range to use that most of the time, and miraculously, would you look at that, my capacitor is now stable. How amazing is that? Now for low slots, we've mentioned looking at the defense of this particular ship, if I can tap on the right one, this is a shield based ship, so of course I'm going to fit in shield tanking modules. I'm actually here going to put up to the Mark III shield uh, booster, of shield booster itself. Let's fit that there. A Mark III shield, small shield booster. What that does is repairs my shield. As I take damage with the shield, I can activate that and it will repair it up. Something like a small shield extender, however, if I put one of those on, you'll see that my basic shields will increase. There, my shields themselves are now bigger. And I can also activate the small shield extender to give myself an extra whack of, uh, of shield. If you're out in combat and you've noticed that the enemy's shields has got a little blue line over it, it means they've activated a shield extender. So actually, I'm going to leave the shield extender on here. I then have on the lower end here, I have a propulsion fitting. Here I've gone for an afterburner. I can actually upgrade that to a Mark V small afterburner, which is going to kick me that little bit faster. This will give me um, much faster movement speed here. You can see I'm already up to 339.07. Um, I can actually push that up even further by activating that afterburner. You'll see here 134% flight velocity adjustment, meaning rather than 339, where is it? 340, I'm going to be doing close to about nearly a thousand actually, about 900 odd, which is a pretty big difference. Finally, in the middle, I have gone for a Mark V gyro stabilizer. This is a weapon boosting piece of equipment. Ultimately, what this one does, as you can see here, with it fitted standardly, it gives a damage bonus of 5% to the turrets, to small turrets, well, to any turrets, in fairness, not just small, to any cannon turrets. Gyro stabilizers work with cannons, and it'll tell you this down here. Grants a bonus to the firing rate and damage of cannons. Overheating it temporarily can amplify its effects. Now this means that if, for example, here you see if I go to my offense of 114.32, if I were to unfit this, 
my DPS is going to drop down to 106.43. Let's put that Mark V gyro stabilizer back into position there. I missed the tap, of course I did. There we are, fit. And that will boost my DPS back up now. Let's close that down to 114.32. That is what is called cold DPS. That means damage per second is 114.32 um, based on me not having anything activated. If I undock in a moment, I will actually activate that to showcase the difference that it can make um, just to show that that does a boost. So actually, let's go and do that now. So here we are now in space. Let me go back into the fitting menu just to show you that the damage there is still 114.32. Close that back down. If I now tap on that gyro stabilizer, once it activates, let's jump back into the fitting. Rather than the 114, that has now shot up to 140.53, although that is only for the duration of that activation. Once that has activated, it will go down from there. Same if I go from here, 339 meters per second standard. If I activate my afterburner, you'll see that is shooting all the way up there. That's going to shoot up and we'll see what that gets to in a moment. If we go back to the fitting while the afterburner is activating, look at the defense there, 3290 with a shield of 1340. If I come out of here and I activate that shield extender, you'll see, bam, I get 146% well, extra shield. If I go back into the fitting, that has whacked that right up to 3290. That's a big jump up there temporarily whilst that activates again. Once that deactivates, like the after, uh, like the gyro stabilizer there, the gyro stabilizer will take it down. And actually, I was a little bit off with the afterburner. And um, the afterburner, it's about 631 meters per second. We're getting not quite the 900 I was anticipating. Finally, just because some people do keep asking, as you can see, I've now fit all of this, I can actually take these turrets one by one, drag them over each other into position and move all these things down. I like to personally, a lot of you have asked this, I like to personally have all of my weapon systems along the top row and all of my defensive systems at the bottom. I want the two that are in quick access of my thumb to be the most important, that is to say the shield extender and the turrets themselves. Things like the gyro stabilizer, the web of fire and the Nosferatu aren't as important, those can be a little bit further away. Anyway, folks, I hope that gives you an idea of how to fit a particular ship as you look at it. Hopefully, it'll give you some inspiration to have a look at different ships as well. Um, go down that ship tree, find one you like the look of, like the statistics and the roles for, that kind of thing, and how to get on with fitting it. You will also see on the fitting menu there, that's how you get to your different skins once you've got those active, and you can play around with those as well. There's some very cool skins in the game. Very pleased with that. Anyway, folks, let me know what your favorite ship is, how you're fitting it, what kinds of fun you're having with it, all that kind of stuff in the comment section below or again on those social media channels. Come here, take a screenshot like that, put it up on Twitter or Facebook and send it to me. In fact, if you put it up on Twitter, tag me in it at Captain Benzie, at CPT Benzie and use the hashtag CSKL for Catskull Cartel and I will come and have a look at those, comment on your ships, comment on your cool little screenshots as well. Thanks for watching, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.